Welcome back to another episode of Everything You Need to Know Before You Buy, a series inspired by Jake Baldino's Before You Buy series, where I gather all the news and trailers of an upcoming game and formulate an opinion on whether you should buy this game or not. I don't know if the game is actually good or not, since I don't have access to a view copy of some sort, so I'm in the same position as you, the viewer, but the whole aim of this series is to give you some knowledge and guidance for these upcoming games. So, here's everything you need to know before you buy Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is an upcoming Nintendo Switch game set for release on May 12th. It's a sequel to the 2017 release Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, known for its open world exploration, as well as one of the best selling video games of all time. Tears of the Kingdom was developed just after Breath of the Wild, after realising they couldn't put all their ideas into DLC. Of course, Breath of the Wild had DLC in form of an expansion pass, but clearly that wasn't enough. So, what's Tears of the Kingdom about? The team working on the game has made an effort to not spoil anything about it. On the official website, there's a line that says, Embark on a perilous quest to find the missing princess and unravel the truth behind a cataclysmic event that has sent the kingdom into turmoil. Doesn't really tell much, however, there's been several trailers out to look at, and we'll start from the oldest, Nintendo's E3 2019 trailer. Here we see Link and Zelda exploring underground, where they find a withered corpse getting reanimated by, I presume, Malice, which causes Hyrule Castle to rise up to the sky. That was basically it for that trailer. The corpse is most likely Ganondorf, who's confirmed to be the antagonist of Tears of the Kingdom. In the first official trailer, we see the biggest change from the prequel. We see Link exploring islands in the sky called Sky Islands, and skydiving back down to the surface, expanding the Kingdom of Hyrule above ground. We also see this scene where Link gets this special arm brace on his right arm, which grants him a few abilities I'll cover later when talking about the gameplay. I believe his arm in the Master Sword gets damaged due to the malice from Ganondorf's reanimation, as you can see here. We don't know exactly the time difference between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, but there is a gap between the two as we see returning characters like Sidon and Riju looking more mature. What seals the deal is that Teba's son, Tulin, has grown, and it looks like he's an opponent character for Tears of the Kingdom. Makes me wonder what happened to Teba though. In the third official trailer, new characters are shown, like this character, and this one in particular who possesses a yellow tear. These tears are obviously the main plot point of the game, but we don't know the significance yet. Zelda also has a yellow tear, maybe it was passed down or that there's two of them. Ganondorf has a red tear, Sidon a blue tear, Riju an orange tear, and Tulin a green tear. Now, let's talk about the gameplay that Tears of the Kingdom has to offer. Link has now four new abilities. Recall, which rewinds an object's movement. Here you can see Link use Recall to get up to the Sky Islands, and you can even use it in battle where it's used on this Rock Otter Rock attack. Fuse, which allows you to combine two objects together to create stronger weapons with different effects. For example, you can fuse an arrow with a Keith's eyeball to create a homing arrow, or fuse a long stick with a pitchfork to create a longer pitchfork. Ultra Hand, which allows you to attach objects from the environment together. Here you can see Link attach some logs and fans to create a makeshift boat. To operate your creation, you have to hit it to turn it on, and these fans have a certain amount of battery so they can run on endlessly. Also, using your creation in the air will deplete the battery faster. The last ability is called Ascend, which allows you to go through ceilings to reach the surface above. It can be used anywhere as long as you're under a ceiling, making exploration a breeze instead of climbing up. I'm excited for the combinations that you could do with Fuse and Ultra Hand, as well as the possible opportunities you'll encounter with Recall and Ascend. Gameplay overall seems to be the same as Breath of the Wild, with the addition of new enemies, areas, puzzles, UI, etc. I noticed a few things, for example, they've kept shrines in the game as you can see on the minimap here, as well as Shrieker Towers. Characters like Sidon will aid you in battle during I assume a specific part of the story, it even looks like the residents of Hyrule Kingdom will join in battle at some point. Finally, it's time to ask the question, should you buy Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? If you're a fan of the series, or even if you started the series from Breath of the Wild, it's definitely a must buy. If you're new to the series entirely and considering Tears of the Kingdom, I recommend that you play Breath of the Wild first just to get the feel of the game and know the story. However, you can just save your money and buy Tears of the Kingdom instead, since Breath of the Wild is usually at retail price and sales never go under £40, so you could just save and look up the story online. I have no doubt that Tears of the Kingdom will meet expectations, the new exploration in the skies and abilities add a new spin to the mix. The only concern will most likely be the performance and frame rate. In recent gameplay showcases, there have been a few frame drops at certain parts, but don't forget the Nintendo Switch is an 8th generation console, a previous generation long overdue for an upgrade. Aside from that, it looks like Tears of the Kingdom is going to be another highly rated entry in the Nintendo Switch library and top seller. And that's it for this episode, Tears of the Kingdom is going to be the game of the month for May. The Legend of Zelda community have been anticipating and theorizing about the game. I doubt it'll disappoint anyone at all. 
Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Everything You Need to Know Before You Buy. If you want to support the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out the channel for more. And as always, I'll see you guys next time and catch you guys later. Take care.